Let's hit these committee moves I wanted to, uh, to get to. So, Kevin, you, you bought Honeywell. Yeah, we initiated a new position in Honeywell yesterday, Scott. We think with everything that Boeing's doing wrong, um, companies like GE Aerospace, Honeywell can be beneficiaries. They're streamlining a lot of the business. Aerospace is the, is the key component to it. But I think they can also be a beneficiary of restructuring, uh, onshoring, the infrastructure play. So 2.2% dividend, big, big share buybacks, solid dividend growth. It's been, a, it's been kind of a stalwart dog for a while, too. So we're looking for something to break out a little bit here. Okay, sold some calls in Freeport. Freeport's been unbelievable. I mean, what we're seeing in, in gold and, and Freeport specifically has been fantastic. But the spike in volatility that we've had over the past two weeks is giving us opportunities to write premium. So if you have stocks that you're invested in, that are appreciated, uh, I would take advantage of writing calls in here. We wrote a call for a $57 strike two weeks out. It annualizes out of 11% premium. And if that stock goes to 57 in two weeks, I'll ring the register, Scott. All right. Why you bought more Lidos? I did. So, and we're seeing the stock up today. And the reason why it's up, it's really defensive. I mean, it's one of those one of those rare companies where it's both growing and it's also defensive. And I use defensive in two senses of the word. Number one, it's got a defense business. It's about 50% of revenue. It's a $15 billion revenue company. And then they've got their civilian business. If you go through the airport, you see the scanners going through, you know, TSA. And then it's got a healthcare business. But where I like them in in defense is they're not a metal bender only. Okay, they are a technology company. You have new management coming about a year ago. They're doing great things. The stock is cheap. This is one of my favorite holdings, actually, and I think it's going to keep moving higher and higher. So, uh, so you know, it's a pretty full position for me, but on dips, I'd buy more. Okay, so Cisco is in the news today, Jimmy. It's one of our calls of the day. Positive Catalyst Watch opened at uh, your favorite financial institution, City. Price targets 52. They do uh, rate it neutral. What do you think? Yeah. There's uh, uh, more than a little bit of a show me story here, Kevin. I know you're in the name as well. And the real question here is whether Splunk can reinitiate earnings growth here. I think it can, uh, but this is definitely a show me situation. Uh, absent Splunk, things have been pretty dull at Cisco, to say the least. Um, a lot of tech spending has gone outside of Cisco's products, more to AI and things like Oracle and NVIDIA. So they really need that Splunk acquisition to start shining through here. All right. Do you want to take Kevin uh, McDonald's? Lowered uh, the comps. Uh, at Loop Capital today. Unfavorable weather and increased competition are going to hurt comps, they say. 357, they maintain the price target. Seems a little high on that price target uh, based on the news that they're talking about. Also, the fact that the stock can't seem to get above 300. So if you want to have a price target at McDonald's, I think 300 is a lot more appropriate than 357. We've owned it for over a decade. I like the stock. It's a great dividend compounder. But I don't know that I'd be rushing into it at this moment. And um, I think the price target's too high. Why well, you want to talk some Netflix with me? Because the price target gets bumped today to 700 from 600 at Morgan Stanley. Overweight is the rating. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to think of a week that went by where some analyst has raised their price target. Well, they had to. I mean, the stock's yeah. at 620. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. But still, 700. Yeah. Makes look, sense. I, I mean, again, I, I, I think that okay, maybe it's not a value because you've got a scarcity of a pure trading play here. That's the leading player in the world. That's profitable. That can grow earnings as much as they want. They still have tremendous leverage in their monthly subscription costs, which they've raised over the past couple of years. But still, is below where others with less of a product offering are pricing their product. So at the end of the day, you're going to have two players. One's going to be Disney and one's going to be uh, Netflix of any scale. So, so I'm staying on board again. Maybe I'll get the opportunity over the next few days to buy more, but still a relatively small position, unfortunately. Amy, let's talk some ASML, um, sure. which uh, I, you say you're looking to trim. Um, the target got trimmed today to $1,052 from $1,072. <laughs> Very precise, yeah. At Bernstein, uh, they still rate it outperform. Why are you looking to possibly trim it uh, It's just had such a run. It's such a great company, but if you just look at the chart, it's a straight line up at this point, um, over 40 times. I think I think the story's known. I think all of semis have run, and they've gone with it, and I just think the space is probably a little overdone. All right.